I thought I'd do a video showing the single frequency repeater on this radio in a bit more depth so you can see how it works and how it's set up. Before I start I just want to make it clear that although I'm making videos about this radio I don't recommend it at the moment. You can see my other video about that if you want to hear the full story. I actually bought this radio purely because of the single frequency repeater, so I have been playing about with it and trying to understand how it works. The setup of it is a bit weird in my opinion. It uses dual capacity direct mode, which is a feature that's normally meant for having two channels on one simplex frequency on DMR. You might use this, for example, if you're a business radio user and only want to pay for licensing one frequency but you want two channels on your radios for two different groups of users. With dual capacity direct mode, the radios synchronize their timing so that both time slots can be used. This radio uses dual capacity direct mode for the single frequency repeater though. The reason I don't really like the way it operates is because it doesn't really work as you would expect a repeater to work. If I turn on my radio on time slot one, then I transmit, the single frequency repeater will receive it and transmit it back out on time slot 2. But if someone else turns on their radio and they're in range of the repeater but not in range of me, then they'd have to know to put their radio on time slot 2 to receive my transmission through the repeater. If they had their radio on time slot 1, then they wouldn't hear anything and if they tried to transmit, I wouldn't hear them either because the repeater would transmit it back out on time slot 2, which my radio isn't listening on. Now let's say a third person who was also in range of the repeater, but not with either of the other two radios, wants to join in. If they tried to speak through the repeater on time slot 1, then the repeater would send it back out on time slot 2, and this radio would hear it, but this one wouldn't, because this one is listening on the wrong time slot. So to have group communications between multiple people is not really possible. And you might say, well, why don't you just have all of the radios transmit on time slot 1 and receive on time slot 2? That way they'd all be listening to the right time slot to receive transmissions from the repeater. And you'd be right. But the problem with that is this isn't what dual capacity direct mode was designed for. So most radios can't be programmed that way. So what you'd have to do on most radios, if you wanted to do that, would be to have two channels. One you switch on to when you want to transmit, and the other when you want to receive. And if you were having a conversation with someone, you'd have to switch back and forth every time you transmit. So it's just not a good experience. I guess if you wanted to be really smart, maybe you could even put the two channels into a scan list and have it automatically start scanning whenever you're on either of the two channels. I guess if you did that on all the radios, it might work pretty similarly to a real repeater, but it does seem a bit hacky to me when there's another way to implement a single frequency repeater that seems much better. From what I've read online, other single frequency repeaters work in a different way. They listen for transmissions on a normal simplex channel, so you don't have to use dual capacity direct mode or any special settings at all on the subscriber radios. From their perspective, they don't even know about the repeater. They're just using a simplex frequency. Once the repeater receives that signal, it just transmits the voice back out on the other time slot. The radios don't all need to be synchronized like with dual capacity direct mode because they just transmit and the repeater synchronizes up to the radio of whoever is speaking and transmits on the other time slot. I did read an account of someone on Reddit saying that their MD380 had problems when they could hear the repeater and the other person transmitting locally. So I guess that can be a problem on certain radios that don't like having both time slots being used on a simplex channel. But then other radios seem to have the ability to deal with it fine, like the Motorola I have has a setting in the programming software to tell it to use a single frequency repeater. So I assume it would deal with this fine. And in case anyone was interested, no, that doesn't work with the single frequency repeater on this radio. I had to program up some channels using dual capacity direct mode on the Motorola to get it to work with this. 
If you've got this radio and want to try it out, let me show you how to set up the single frequency repeater. Now you can do this either from VFO mode or you can program in two channels to do it. It doesn't really matter either way. I'm going to be doing it with the channels just because it's easier because I already have them set up. So let me just show you how to do that. First we're going to go into the menu. So the control is on the bottom line at the moment. So if I hold this button here, it opens up the menu to edit that channel. Or if you're in VFO mode, it will let you edit that VFO. Um, we're going to set the frequency, which I've already done here. Um, so same transmit and receive frequency. In this case, because we're on the bottom line, I'm going to set it on slot 2. And it should be the same for both RX and TX. Color code, I would suggest having it on the same color code on both the top and bottom line. And keep scrolling down and we're going to get to contact. So I'm using talk group 1. It doesn't particularly matter which contact you use as long as it's the same on all the radios. So then I exit that menu. Um, I'm going to press that button to switch control to the top line. Go into that by holding it. Again, it should be a digital channel. The frequency should be the same. This time we're going to select slot 1 and color code should be the same and keep going down and select the same contact as well and if you're doing this on channel mode uh, make sure to save it so save to current channel uh, just to save those changes the last thing you need to do is go into the menu scroll all the way up to local set and then go to a b repeat and turn that switch on and turn on this RXTX for both A and B bands on the radio. So that's it, it is now set up and I'll just show you that it's working. I've set this radio here to use time slot 2 and here, this one obviously is a repeater. This one is on time slot 1, hopefully you can see that. If I transmit we'll see this screen light up and you can see the arrows showing that it's receiving on one of them and transmitting back out on the other and you can see that that radio is receiving the thing I don't really like about this single frequency repeater though is that it seems to be transcoding the audio so it doesn't just send the voice data through like every other DMR repeater does. It seems to be actually decoding it and then re-encoding it again. And you can tell that because the received audio is really, really quiet compared to if you're listening directly. Uh, let me just demonstrate that. So this radio here is on time slot 2. And I'm going to bring that up to the microphone and talk into the other radio that is on time slot 1. So that means it is going through the repeater. One, two, three, four, five. Single frequency, Single frequency repeater. repeater. Testing. One, two. One, two. Okay, so maybe you could hear that that was quite quiet. And the volume on this radio has turned up quite high. Um, that is quite high for this radio. If I now switch this onto time slot two, so that we're receiving it directly and it's not going through the repeater. I'll do the same thing again and you should hear how much louder it is. One, two, one, two, three, three, four, five. One, two, one, two three. three. Single, Single frequency, frequency repeater. repeater. Testing. Yeah, so I think you could probably tell the difference there. And um, Basically, when you're using the single frequency repeater on this thing, you just have to turn the volume up really, really high so that you can hear anything. Another issue with it is that sometimes it just doesn't seem to transmit anything, um, or any voice, at least. Um, if I go through it enough times, I might actually be able to trigger that. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, one, two. In fact, I've managed to trigger it already. So I'm still transmitting on the Islands HD1, which is on time slot two. The Motorola here is receiving, 
and there's no audio at all coming out of it. If I turn that up all the way, you can hear it's not really passing any audio at all. So yeah, the single frequency repeater is just not very reliable. Anyway, while we're here, I might as well mention some of the other repeater functions of this radio. It can do single band repeat, um, so that is just like a normal repeater, although it probably is going to have issues with desensitization because actual repeaters normally have cavities to stop the receiver being desensitized by the transmitter. But um, the feature is there. I'm not sure how useful it is though. Uh, you can also do cross band repeat. Um, and you set it up in exactly the same way that I've just done the single frequency repeater, except you would have one line of the display on a UHF frequency and the other on a VHF frequency. And that can be either on digital or analog. You can also convert between digital and analog. So if I switch this over to VFO mode on the bottom line, and um, let's see what frequency shall I use for the Let's just use that frequency as an example. I'll put the Motorola on, that's already on time slot one, so that will be received by this top line of the display. The repeater function is still on, and then I'll put the HD1 on that same frequency that I've got on the bottom line there. And uh, I'll bring the HD1 up to the microphone again so you can hear it while I transmit on the Motorola. So yeah, that does work. It's getting a bit of kind of interference because the transmitting radio is so close. Um, but it's not quite as bad if I do it from further away. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I should be able to do the same thing the other way round, but it probably won't work all that well because when this radio is transmitting DMR, but receiving FM or analog, it uh, seems to get quite a loud pulsing sound on the audio. But I'll let you see it so you can see what happens anyway. One, two, three, four, five. Testing the analog to digital repeat function. I should note that it's not quite as bad if you do it on FM. So if I go to one, four, five, Let's just say 650 and put the HD1 on the same frequency. One, two, three, four, five. Testing the uh, crossband repeat from analog to digital. So yeah, um, you can see that that actually worked fine. So I hope that was interesting for you. If there's any questions, just leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more like this. And I will see you in the next one.